Hello, everyone, and thanks very much for tuning in again. This is webinar number nine. Uh, and today I want to take you to a place that is very dear to me. Um, and it's this image we're going to be talking about. And this photo was taken in Jinja in Uganda. Now, this is a magical place, a small town just in the northern tip of Lake Victoria. But the water you see in the background is not Lake Victoria. It's actually the very first kilometer of the River Nile. And as you know, the River Nile goes uh, through uh, three or four countries and then obviously through Egypt, past the pyramids, etc., and then terminates in the, um, in the Mediterranean. I also have a photo from maybe six or seven years earlier, 200 kilometers land inwards, uh, which is also of the Nile. I'll show it to you now. And this image was taken on the way to northern Uganda. Uh, and that's really the area I want to be talking to you about right now. I was asked by a foundation in the United States uh, to make a short video about the work that they were doing in uh, northern Uganda and we went with, with several people um, and the work they did was uh, with children in that region who suffered a very serious health condition called nodding syndrome. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's very rare and it really only uh, exists in a very small geographical pocket most of which is the north of Uganda, but also a small part of uh, South Sudan. And um, it's a disease where, uh, where kids get seizures um, and become totally disoriented and then somehow just wander off. And so some kids end up in the river and drown and others uh, walk into a fire. So it's a pretty serious condition. And I remember the short week that we were there, we were living in some kind of a, a camp, you know, in a very rural area. I remember the short week we were there was very, very in intense. Uh, I still have that uh, short uh, clip that I made there, or the short documentary, I should say, that I made there. So let's have a quick look at uh, what that looks like. Some of the villagers, many of them still believe it's contagious, which it's not. We correct the malnutrition by feeding them local foods. Second of all, we provide vitamin therapy. Thirdly, we provide an educational program and fourth, we give them lots of love. Our children right now are running and playing soccer. They are dancing and singing. For me, it's a miracle. There's a term called Ubuntu, and it means I am because you are, symbolizing we are interconnected through this world. These are children of the world. They are like any other child. They deserve dignity. They deserve to live with hope. They deserve to be loved and cared for. So one of the reasons why I wanted to loop back to this story, which is really really took place six, seven years before the image uh, in the book that I wanted to talk about today was taken, is because I also remember it as one of the moments, maybe the first moment that I started realizing that this uh, getting emotional on airplanes 
was something that was going to occur more often in my life. Um, we must have been in the north for a short week, maybe five days. Uh, we had to travel an entire day to get to the south of the country to get to the airport. And uh, I just remember uh, going straight on the plane, uh, sitting strapped into my seat and just being surrounded by people that seemed to all be showing each other photographs and videos on their phones of gorillas. Because one of the reasons why people go to Uganda, uh, one, of the, one of the main attractions of the country is uh, nature reserves where you can do gorilla spotting. And so everyone around me seemed to be, you know, in Uganda for that reason. And I just felt so alone and so, uh, so, so alienated by these people. Um, and I really, I remember just feeling frustrated, probably unfairly so, but I just I felt frustrated of, you know, wanting to share the experience that I had just had with them and say, look, there's more to it. Look, this is also happening, you know. And so, I don't know. And I got really emotional. I'm sure I did. And uh, I'm sure it didn't last very long, but uh, it was probably intense. And um, But I also remember, I also remember that I was thinking, you know, this... Uh, is crying on airplanes you better start accepting that this is a feature in your life so so that's uh, why I chose this photograph and how it brought me back to Uganda um, in fact uh, I'm doing now a long-term project in the country so I'll be going back there several times and I have been back several times and uh, and it's become a really special place and I'm happy to be able to keep working there uh, okay, and I want to leave it there. Uh, let's see which photograph we're going to talk about next. Oh, yes. Next episode, which is on Wednesday. Um, we're going to stay in the region. We're going to stay in East Africa. And we're going to take you to Kenya, to Nairobi. And to this beautiful group of human beings. I'll tell you all about it on Wednesday. Uh, but for now, I want to thank you. Again, I want to remind you that uh, if you want to uh, order the book, you can do it on whyicryonairplanes.com. Uh, the discount code is on the screen right now. That'll give you a 25% discount uh, on the book. Uh, and just thank you for being here. And I really, really hope to see you next Wednesday. <laughs>